Is it possible to max out the high score in Super Mario Maker 2 to collect a total of basically 1 billion points in only 500 in-game seconds? A couple of days ago we took a look at this question and we came to a conclusion. Nope, sadly not. All that we were able to achieve were a lousy 788,086,500 points. Getting more points, sadly, simply appeared to be impossible. Naturally, this record only stood for about 8 hours before it got beaten. So today we are going to discuss lots of ideas that popped up in the comment section below first high score attempt. We will take a look at those potential improvements and we will try to finally answer the question whether the perfect highest high score in Super Mario Maker 2 is possible. So are you ready? Let's do this! Okay, so our old design basically kills 49 munchers, 3 bowsers and 5 boom booms every time we reload this area. Thanks to rapid reloading we were able to kill all those enemies 10 times per in-game second. And the way we circumvent the rule of 7 is by clever power block and tangling. So let's take a look at a couple of ideas for improvements. The idea that probably popped up the most is the following. Can we improve the score by putting mushrooms on top of the pipe so that Todet eats them during each reload? Well, sadly nope. That's for two reasons. First, it is no longer possible to place power-ups on top of checkpoints in Mario Maker 2. So if we were to do this, we would have to get rid of the infinite checkpoint glitch points. Second, mushrooms do not respawn once they were devoured, which means putting them there only adds 2000 points once, but not per reload. Next, are we able to gain additional points by having pipes or blasters shoot out power-ups every time we leave the pipe? That sadly doesn't work either. Neither bullet blasters nor red pipes spawn something in the short 6 frames that pass between each reload. And reloading less often so that we can fit those in would drastically reduce the score. So that's another nope. The next idea however is a really interesting one. Can't we split the bowsers and boom booms over all the different score batteries so that they grant us 8000 points as the first kill in a set of 7. So the answer to this question is actually surprisingly complicated. When 7 enemies are killed at once then the first one is always 200 points and then they grant us more until the 7th enemy dies which grants us 8000 points. The idea here is to swap out the first 200 points points muncher kill for an 8000 points bowser kill so that we get a total of 24200 precious score points for each score battery instead of just 16400. On paper that would push up our per reload score drastically but sadly there is a tiny problem. Bowsers are always calculated last when destroying a set of 7. No matter how we place the 6 munchers and this bowser, the bowser will always get destroyed last, which means that putting a bowser in a normal score battery doesn't improve the score it grants. Bowser or muncher, we always get the exact same amount of points. So here is where this gets interesting. If we build a muncher tower, this is no longer true, because if munchers are towered, their calculation order changes. Now the two munchers at the bottom die first, then Bowser and only then the towered munchers are affected by the population. There is a strange quirk in the way towered enemies are handled when a power block explodes. Only a maximum of 3 stacked munchers get defeated. If the tower is higher, the muncher at the top survives. So if we want to kill 7 enemies at once, then the best setup is this one. He will replace the 1000 points kill with the 8000 points Bowser kill. This is an improvement of whopping 7000 points per reload per score battery that is pretty significant. So why didn't we use this trick? Well that's because we sadly don't have enough room to stack munchers in our design. Since we're trying to entangle as many sets of 7 as possible we just don't have the space to tower the munchers. So giving the Bowsers and Boom Booms their own separate set is the best solution for now. Ok, so the next improvement idea that popped up often is the following. Can't we just use vertical sub areas since those stay permanently loaded so that we can fit in more than 8 score batteries? The answer here is a nope once again for two reasons. First, even if everything stays loaded it doesn't change that we would have to load the area first which would mean that we can't rapid reload and would reduce the score drastically. And second and much more importantly. When I spread the rumor that vertical sub areas are permanently loaded, I sadly lied to you by accident. Vertical sub areas don't 
keep everything above us loaded. What is actually happening is much wilder and much weirder. So shout out to YouTuber Smashboss who figured out what is exactly going on. Basically the game does not keep everything above Mario loaded. For whatever mysterious reason, it only keeps the uppermost 16 blocks globally loaded in a vertical sub area. We can visualize this here. This two state flipper contraption is placed exactly 16 blocks below the upper area border, which means it is still inside the permanently loaded area. No matter how far Luigi travels, the two state flipper never unloads. But if we put this contraption only one block lower, then it suddenly is no longer inside the permanently loaded area and it despawns after a short while. Yep, I have no idea why this is either, but sadly it definitely doesn't allow us to improve the score. Alright, so those were most of the suggestions below our previous high score attempt. But as it turns out, none of those allow us to actually beat our old highest high score design. So in the beginning of the video, I said that our previous high score only was the highest high score for about 8 hours. So what is the trick? What is the mechanic that was used to beat the high score? Well, the answer to this question is actually surprisingly simple. As it turns out, I missed one super important trick. Power blocks have a specific loading order that allows us to entangle them in a much more efficient way. So check this out. Here we have two power blocks and two sets of seven munchers. The lower power block is only able to reach the lower row of munchers. The upper power block is able to reach both rows of munchers. So if we run the game, we only score one set of seven munchers, since one power block is able to affect both sets of seven. Right? Well, right. We only get the normal 16,400 points once we start the game. Everything behaves as expected. So here we have the exact same setup, but this time we put the power blocks on top and the munchers at the bottom. The power at the top is only able to reach the upper row of munchers. The power at the bottom reaches both once again. So if we start the game, we only score one set of seven again, since one power block affects both sets of seven, right? Well, no. This time we actually score two sets of seven. Holy fuzzy. What is going on here? Well, the answer to this question is actually unsurprisingly, surprisingly simple. Power blocks just have a set loading order. They're calculated one after the other. If one POW already destroyed a set of munchers, then the next POW isn't able to kill them anymore. The POWs are calculated first left to right and afterwards top to bottom. Hooray! All that's left to do for us now is to find the optimal power block entanglement setup so that we're able to trigger the maximum amount of muncher murders per reload. So huge, gigantic and enormous shout out to Reddit user VTrack. He or she was the first one to figure out this trick and to build an optimal setup. This is what the VTrack setup looks like. Here we have a total of 11 sets of 7 that get perfectly transformed into precious core points every single time this room is reloaded. This design uses every single spot in the entity limit. It kills 335,000 munchers in 500 in-game seconds. And most importantly, it grants us 204,000 points per reload. Ladies and gentlemen, 204,000 points per reload is enough to reach the perfect highest high score. Hooray! Watch now how VDRAC used this design to reach the perfect and absolute highest high score in Super Mario Maker 2 for the very first time in human history. The race is over. We now know the definitive answer. The highest high score in Super Mario Maker 2 is 999,999,990. And it was, as far as I can tell, first achieved by VDRAC on the 24th of July 2019 in his legendary video. My, my, my lamest achievement ever. So, is there anything left for us to do now that the highest possible high score has been achieved? Well, actually yes, let's change this silly high score challenge into something different. Let's change it into the world's most boring speedrunning category. Because while VDRAC was able to achieve the highest possible score, it took him 491 in-game seconds to reach it. But there is actually a slightly faster way to max out the score, because this design can actually still be improved. 
So do you remember that Bowser trick we took a look at at the beginning of the video? The fact that we're able to score more points per score battery if we place one Bowser into each score battery and place down the munchers as two stacks of three. Well, thanks to our newly gathered knowledge of power block loading order, we're finally able to incorporate this into a high score design. This is what such a design looks like. Here we once again have 11 score batteries, but this time all Bowsers and Boom Booms are placed in such a way that they optimally increase the per load score of their score battery. The way this works is the following. This power block is the first one to load and only kills all enemies in this score battery. Next this power is activated and kills everything that lives in this area. Then this one, this one and afterwards the lower power blocks are triggered in the same order until each pow pow bloated and all batteries got defeated. This design now grants us a total of 213,800 points per reload, which means this design hits the max score in only 468 seconds, which as far as I can tell is a world record in the lamest speedrunning category in video gaming history. It's the only speedrun that takes over five hours of pressing a single button. Hooray! So is this the absolute definitive fastest way to max out the score in Super Mario Maker 2? Well, I honestly have no idea. It's pretty optimized as far as I can tell, but there is a good chance that someone finds a faster way to reach the perfect score within the next eight hours for all I know. One way this design can definitely be improved drastically would be by using black hole glitch enemy cloning. But I decided not to look into this for two reasons. First, the glitch will probably be patched in a couple of weeks and second, <sighs> see, Nintendo is deleting offline levels that use the black hole glitch. Optimizing such a design takes forever and I don't want to put dozens of hours into a design that Nintendo then just deletes. Also, please Nintendo stop deleting offline levels, that's so childish. Anyway, so here we have it, it is possible to reach the maximum high score in Super Mario Maker 2 and the currently fastest way to do it glitchless takes 468 in-game seconds. I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you did, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and maybe you feel especially maxed out today and want to hit the subscribe button as well. I hope that all of you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye!